For those that have been kind of coming along over the summer, you'll know that we're going to be starting our next season of BRT. <laughs> BRT is not a type of sandwich, it's Bible read-through. And you know that this year we're reading through the Bible together, and then next year as well we'll have read through the Old Testament once and the New Testament twice. So starting off on the 25th of September, uh, which is next Sunday, the reading plan starts for Messiah, which is basically it's just the New Testament, but it's formatted slightly differently. Those that have done BRT know what I'm talking about. And um, the idea is we want to give as, way, as many of these for free as we can, and we want to get as many people at Silver City reading their Bible regularly as possible. And so BRT is a great way to do that. BRT is done in community. So it's not just reading the Bible on your own, but there's three ways you can get involved. There's an in-person groups that happen in some people's homes. And we might, if the numbers permit, we might even look to do one starting in the church. Um, we'll see who signs up and whether we need to do that. But there's in-person, there's online. So Pastor Ike at the back gives a little wave. Pastor Ike, yep. Pastor Ike leads an online uh, group. Give us a shout if you're part of the online one. Oh, that's not very loud, is it? Come on, give us a little bit. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, yeah. Oh, what? And then there's a WhatsApp group, Henry, as well. So there's something for everyone. And even if you are a recluse and you just want to read it in private, fine. We'll give you one and you can read it on your own. The idea is to get people reading their Bibles daily. It's, um, a, it's a great way to do it. So with that in mind, what we're going to do today is we're just going to really drill down into this principle of Bible reading. This, this habit that, let's be honest, we know how great life can be when we've got a regular healthy Bible reading going on in our life. We feel the benefit of it. But I, I know I'm not alone when I say you feel the absence when it's not there. And um, so we, that's why we're passionate about this because having a healthy Bible reading habit in your life is going to be one of the key ingredients to having a healthy, solid foundation to build on for your Christian walk. So to do that, I'm going to do a little interview. I'm going to grill someone this morning. And who better to grill about Bible reading, I thought, than Eno Ibeque. So let's give Eno a round of applause. Eno's going to come up and join me at the front. And um, I'm going to introduce her properly as she comes. So Eno, um, as we all know, married to Ike, um, and been part of this church for many, many years. Come and grab a seat, Eno. And um, she, she wears many hats. She's um, a wonderful wife, wonderful mother, a uh, wonderful uh, member of our church. And then also, you are also a, a key leader of the BSF group in Aberdeen, which is Bible Studies Fellowship. Yeah, anyone? Uh, yeah. Which BSF, for those that don't know, is um, a group that meet and they, they help men, women, and kids um, all get involved in Bible reading. And my family has been a real beneficiary of that over the years. So Eno leads that up in Aberdeen, and she does a power of work behind the scenes doing that. So let me say, Eno is passionate about Bible reading. Yes? Yes, I am. So it's going to be great to hear her thoughts. So um, tune in. Try and hear what the Lord's saying to you in all of this. And through it all, we're going to leave up the slide. If, as we're going, if you've never been part of BRT, then here's how you do it. You just click on that QR code or visit our website. You can leave your details and then we'll connect you in with one of those groups. We'll give you a book and you can get started. Or come and speak to myself, Pastor Ike, Sheena, Eno after. We'd love to be able to direct you how to do it. So, Eno, um, you very kindly agreed to, to front up here. I'm going to just rattle through a few questions. We've got a long list, don't we? So we'll see how we get on. And then at the end, Eno's going to lead a short exercise with us which is going to be really helpful as well. So let me just start off with a simple question. Um, when did you really start to read your Bible? What's your personal kind of story about reading the Bible in your own life? So I, um, I was born into an occasional going to church family. So I kind of read the Bible now and again all through my childhood. 
In fact, I went to a faith drama school where we were uh, asked to read the Bible at assemblies in the morning. But I wouldn't really call that when I really started to read the Bible, because I was just casual reading of the Bible. I uh, got engaged with the Bible, just really being engaged, deep and intentional in a meaningful way with the Bible after I came to faith. Uh, I said this because that's when I actually started to seek to understand the Bible and to apply the principles to my own life. Because that's what reading the Bible is really all about. And I started the very next day after I came to faith. And I remember it like yesterday. I started with the book of Proverbs. So thinking about the book of Proverbs then, one of the questions we had in our list, we'll, we'll, we'll do them in a jumbled up order. You know I'm a little bit chaotic like that. <laughs> so we'll skip on to this one. So I've got to guess one of your favorite life verses is from the book of Proverbs. Would that be right or wrong? What would be, your, what would be that one on the wall Bible verse that has kind of like been a root and a foundation for you throughout your spiritual journey? Is there one? No, I, I fell in love with the Bible reading the book of Proverbs. But my favorite Bible verse is Romans chapter 8, verse 28. All things, all things work together for good to those that love God and are called according to his purpose. Because I know that I love God. And the Bible tells me that I am called according to his purpose. Alex testified to that today. Even Jean did, Scottish Jean. <laughs> And from reading the Bible, I also know that, <laughs> I call it Scottish Jim because I know it should be English Jim, but he's Scottish now. <laughs> and I also know that the Bible says that there's nothing impossible with God. So what that verse does for me is help me process my seasons. So when I'm happy, when good happens, I rejoice because God has allowed it to happen for my good. And when it is tough, when it is really hard, when I can't understand God, I'm hopeful because I know he can work it together for my good. And when I'm in a mess of my own making, which happens sometimes, terrible troubles, I ask God for mercy and I trust that he can also work it all together for my good. That's why I love that verse. It just helps me process all my seasons. It's wonderful. Anyone else got that as their favorite verse, I wonder? It's a really good one, isn't it? Romans 8, 38. Okay, hey, here's a, here's a question. Now, I'm not just dumping this on know We have, like, talked this through before, so <laughs> this would be a difficult question to answer if we didn't have any time to prepare. But if you only had one word to describe what Bible reading ha has meant to you in your life, what would that one word be that you would select? Anchor. That's what it is for me, anchor. Because it helps me stay with God. When life kicks me around here and there, with the Bible, it keeps me centered in God. And it reminds me of who God is every time and what he says and what he's promised. And something else it does for me is, it just, as I forget, so it just keeps my focus on God. So for me, the Bible is my anchor. Yeah, it's a great word. I think we can all relate to that, those of us that have, have read the Bible for any length of time. It, it, that's what I was talking about earlier. You really feel the absence when you don't have it, because it's like the, the anchor is taken up, and then your ship of your life is bobbing on wave to wave. But that anchor keeps you firm, uh, grounded. It's a great word. Um, we, we know that Bible reading, um, the Bible is a big, it's a book, but it's really a collection of books, 66 books written by many different authors over a long period of time, many different genres. So it's, there's a lot in there. And um, there's some parts, and we all have this if we're honest, there's some parts of the Bible that we love 
and that we really, really just, wow, enjoy. And there's other parts of the Bible that sometimes personally we struggle with or find difficult. Is there a part of the Bible that may be over your time that you maybe struggle with or just found challenging? So I learned very early in my Christian walk that um, well, someone in BSF puts it very nicely this way. That all of scripture is true, but not all of scripture is equally clear. When I started reading the Bible, like I said really early, I had lots of questions. And I used to write them down, and I would ask the Lord the questions. I was at uni when I came to faith. And this was amazing. Because my pastor in the uni fellowship came three consecutive weeks. And he preached on my questions to the Lord, almost word from word, or word by word. And after he did that, or the Lord did that, that was enough for me to start trusting him with the many other unanswered questions on my list. I said, now, even when I struggle, because I still struggle sometimes, with some sections of the Bible, I trust God that he would explain it all to me in his time, maybe on this side of eternity, or maybe on the other side where we see him face to face. So, I do struggle, but I trust God. Yeah, it's a great answer. Uh, we would really want to encourage you to ask questions of the Bible. That's, the, that's one of the joys of reading it together in a community. When we've been doing it, Ashley and I and, and our group, and give a big shout out to the BRT in West Hill. Uh, come on. Um, that's one of the joys is someone comes along, drops in a question, or is like, hey, I don't really get that, or this is my slant on it. What's your take on it? And it's a great way to kind of bounce ideas off one another, and you come to a better understanding. So my, my deep-held belief is, like, if this is the Word of God, this can withstand rigorous scrutiny. Yeah. And it can withstand deep, deep, deep questions and hard questions and still come out on top. Yeah. And that's been my experience. It sounds like it's been yours as well, Emily, yeah. which is wonderful. So, so do that. Yeah. Use BRT as an opportunity to, to dig deep and don't be scared of bits you don't understand. You need to chat through. That's the whole beauty of it, doing it in community. Yeah. The yeah. fact that we don't understand it doesn't mean it's not true. Yeah, yeah that's a summary, yeah. That's a great, great point. Hey, let me ask you a few just interesting, I, I guess, technical questions about your Bible reading, because I'm interested. Um, firstly, do you have, like, a favorite translation? I'm just interested, curious. You know, we've got many different translations kicking about. Do you have a favorite go-to one? So the Good News Bible holds a special place in my heart because we have a history, really. When I came to faith, the pastor preached from a uh, King James Version, and I did not understand Jack. <laughs> so, so someone gave me a Good News Bible, and it was plain English. So it's kind of my favorite because one, it was the only the first Bible I read when I truly began to engage with the Word of God. It was also the very first Bible I bought. I owned this Bible. I had to sacrifice something else to get that Bible. <laughs> and it was from that Bible, the Good News Bible, that I learned to love the God of the Bible and His Word. So I do read other versions, but Good News is still, still my favorite. Yeah, that's great. This version of our BRT book is written in the New Living Translation, which I had never read before. But having read Beginnings and Kingdoms, it's a beautiful translation. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to read for day-to-day -day reading. And um, I've not read the New Testament in it yet, but I'm looking forward to it. So um, keep that one in your mind. And then... Um, Thinking more about some of the other, digging deeper into your own personal kind of habits or things, the, the BRT copy of this Bible is available in hard copy, or you can listen to it or get an ebook as well. So I'm interested, I know. How do you consume your Bible? Is it, are you high tech? Are you just, do you just like the pages? Like, well, I'm like a bit like that. 
or do you listen to it? How do you do it on a day-to-day basis? I, I love the hard copy. I started loving the Word of God with the hard copy of the Bible. That's the truth. Then my husband gifted me an iPad, oh. and I downloaded the U version Bible. I saw me, I've not been able to get back to hard copy since then. <laughs> I have not. So now I have the Bible in my iPad. I have it in my iPhone. I, so I listen to the Bible. I read the Bible. I particularly listen when I go on walks. Rather than let my mind just wander, you know, I just listen and then focus on scriptures. What I found uh, most interesting is what I'm reading is the hard. When I read it, the hard copy. Or now that I read the electronic copy or listen, I still encounter God when I read my Bible. And I just think that's beautiful. Oh, that's interesting. Hey, let's do a snap poll. Didn't really plan to do this. I'm just interested and curious. So you've got hard copy, the e-version, or audio. Hands up if you're a hard copy type of person like me. The truly saved ones amongst us. Awesome. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Hands up if you are an e-book. You like it on the iPad or something like that. Okay. And what about audio? Anyone? Yeah. It's people, some of us like the audio. Cool. So there's like a mixture amongst us. But one day, if you work hard enough, guys, you might get onto the hard copy. Okay. I still have my last hard copy of the Bible because I still love it. I still just look at it and remember the history. So. Yeah. It's great. But it's wonderful. It's wonderful that the Word of God is so freely accessible. Mm. That YouVersion app, if no one, if you haven't heard of that app, it is amazing. You can go on for free, download the new version app to your iPad, your iPhone, whatever it is, and you get the Bible in all different translations, probably different languages, yeah, for free. It's, it's really worth checking out, so um, go for that. Okay, um, here's a question for you. I know what practices, I'm thinking about your Bible reading, what practices have you found most helpful in your own life? Everyone's different, but what have you found most helpful in developing that healthy regular, consistent Bible reading habit in your life? Um, for me, I think over the years, I will come to see what's helped me. The, one of the things that's helped me the most is my view of the Bible. I consider the Bible the Word of God. I have a very high view of the Bible. So even when I want to read my Bible, I always start with something like, Father, this is your Word. And I say it because I believe it, you know. Is the word of God I'm about to read. So when I think about not reading the Bible, I'm like, oh, I've missed out. Oh, what has the Lord, what's the Lord supposed to say to me today that I missed out reading? It's because I did not read his word. So what helped me, one, is the high view of the Bible. It is the word of God. Just imagine you having the word of God himself in your own hands, accessible to you. So that's helped me. The other thing that's helped me is I would say the correct view of myself, I forget. If you know me, you know I'm very forgetful. <laughs> so, so I know that I need to read the Bible to remember always who God is, what he says he is, what he says he will do, what he's promised me. So when I'm not reading the Bible, I'm like, I don't want to forget who this God is. So, so I keep reading the Bible. The other thing I think has helped me is, prayer. I pray a lot. I pray about everything. So, I remember when I used to struggle a lot with reading the Bible. I prayed so much. You know, I pray, God help me. Oh, Lord, if I don't, I didn't read this last night. Lord help me. Oh, I don't know what's wrong. No. So, I just pray a lot for God's help. I ask God for help a lot when I'm not reading my Bible. And then, this one is, I believe it came out of all the prayers and what God has done. I pursue. A man of God once said that pursue is an evidence of desire. If I desire to read the Bible, I have to make an effort to read it. So I have, even though I read, we do a BFF, I also have like a money devotional that I follow. So when BFF is not there, it's there, it's constant. So I have something I can read. So I have a money devotion. And then, of course, I joined BSF, which is like a Bible reading group. So I'm accountable. You know, it helps me read the Bible. So I pursue it. I don't just pray about it, want it, imagine it. I do something to bring it, to bring about what I really desire. So that's what's been helpful for me. For me really. mm. that's, that's fascinating, yeah. Um, thinking then, 
it's clear, you know, that you've intentionally structured your life to have the Bible, you know, as a key part of that kind of core of who you are and how you live life. Um, but even so, with the best of us, um, there's still seasons we go through. There will maybe be fallout of wither, fallout of habit, and kind of let things slide. When you experience them, what happens? What have you experienced in your life when you have neglected the Bible, that daily, regular, consistent habit? Anything stand out from that? Yeah, I do remember once a period, because after we got married, we were in the States. Life happened. We got a full-time job then, nine to five, like 22, 23, 26. I was really busy, and I was going doing my master's program. So I had a full-time education, full-time job. I was a mom. I was a mom. Life was just really busy. And like I said, I pray a lot. So I prayed to God. I prayed and said, Lord, help me. If I'm not so busy, I would read the Bible. I would spend more time with it because I love doing that. But I just couldn't do it. And I did pray a lot. Well, I don't remember what happened after then. I remember this. Then we moved to Aberdeen. For almost a year and a half, I didn't have a job in Aberdeen. And I know this is the spirit of God because this is how he speaks. Very gently, he reminded me. Remember when you said, if you were not so busy, you would read the Bible, you would spend time. And I believe he was saying to me, it wasn't about what the time I had. Because we make time for what is important to us. So I changed my prayer. Help me to see the Bible for what it is. That's what, I think that's what made the difference for me. And immediately God gave me a high view of his word. A correct view of myself. And there was a fact that I have to pursue what I really want. Like I do everything else. I want a new job, I pursue it. You know, what you want, you pursue. That changed me. So I would say pray. Pray that God gives you the right view of the Bible. Pray that God gives you the right view of yourself. Exactly why it's hard for you to read the Bible. Because we are all different. That's why we can't read the Bible. So that's why I would say pray. 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 It's really helpful to hear that. Because I think one of the key areas Satan tries to condemn us in is um, our lack of Bible reading. Mm. And as we've talked about before, there's a difference between condemnation and conviction. So sure, the Holy Spirit can convict us too. But Satan loves to condemn you about your lack of Bible reading and make you feel guilty about it. Um, but the net effect of that is that it drives you further, further away. Because you feel so guilty, you can't even approach it. Whereas the Holy Spirit draws you closer in. So that's one of the key differences. So maybe you're sitting there thinking, well, if they only knew how little I read my Bible, they would be shocked. None of us would be really shocked, let's be honest, because we're probably all thinking the same thing. But here's one thing I discovered this last week, coming back from Sky. Habits are really important, but it's difficult to make a habit, and it can be difficult to break a habit. I know how long it takes, though. It takes about six days of driving an automatic car. And um, when you're used to driving a stick shift with a clutch, brake, and an accelerator, you go into an automatic car, and then suddenly your left foot isn't doing anything. So like you're you're sitting there feeling totally out of your comfort zone, thinking, how do I even you know release the handbrake? And then you have to just get used to driving with one foot. Well, let me tell you, I came back from Sky, I jumped in our car, which is the clutch da -da -da, and everything, and it, my mind had already switched from driving into an automatic mode. So I remember the first junction I came up to thinking, I don't even need the clutch anymore, right? <laughs> and like, the car is starting to go like, <laughs> what's going on? This didn't happen in the higher car. And then I realized, oh, I need to change gear down. And that was only six days of driving something else. The principle is this, though. Like, if you're going from no, no Bible reading at all, hey, expect there might be a few ups and downs along the road. But the important thing is stick with it because before you know it, you're going to find yourself in a rhythm that once you're in that rhythm, it almost just like the momentum gathers. And you, you will look forward to your Bible readings every day. It will be like the fuel going into your engine. You, you'll think, Lord, I need to hear from your word today. Your soul will crave it. So it might take a week or two, or three weeks, who knows? But stick with it. Um, don't let it slide. Thanks for being so honest, answering that like you did, Anna. That was really helpful.
maybe one more question just to round up is, um, obviously, uh, the BRT approach is to read your Bible and then come together in groups. And I know that's something similar with BSF. You, you read it, you do homework, you come together and discuss it. So this principle seems to be like, it's everywhere I look at the moment. Even uh, Stu Thompson, who was from the Bible Society of Scotland a couple of weeks ago, was explaining their resources are linked to that type of approach. What would you say was some of the biggest benefits of doing Bible reading, not just isolated on your own, but within community with a few other believers? Anything you want to say about that before we finish? Um, I think... Uh one of the things I would say is accountability. You know, because when you are in a group, it's almost like a family, right? You know, so you, you, you want to be able to help your family. So when you can't read the Bible, like, you know, there are times it does happen, you know, like, oh, I don't feel like reading it today. And then you kind of remember, you know, I'm going to go into the group, you know, everyone is going to be able to contribute. I want to be able to contribute something. So because you're in a group like a family, it kind of helps you read. And we all need help. So that's good. The other thing I think is, someone said this really well during one of the BSF group uh, discussion meetings. She said, I come in here empty and I leave filled up. You know, sometimes you can just read your Bible, you know, because the truth is, even if you just read it, you don't feel anything. It's done something, you know? But you can just read it because we depend so much on our feelings. You might like, oh, I just feel, uh, you know. And then you come into a group and you begin to hear what people that God has kind of told things. And they begin to share what they've been told. And you kind of go back filled better than you came. So those are the two things I see why it is important to join a Bible reading group. Why it helps. So even when you don't read by yourself, you can't come and you'll be filled anyhow. Yeah, brilliant, yeah. brilliant. So following on from that then, look, if you're, if you're thinking, this does sound great, Dave, never been involved in it, but this is how you do it. Give it a scan, go to the website, fill it out, and we'd love to connect with you and just kind of steer you into how you can do that.